So welcome everyone to our third genealogy tea time that we've had ever for the SAR Genealogical Research Library. And today we have special guest, professional genealogist Linda Colston. She is just down the road, about two counties away from me right now. So she is in Kentucky. She is a former colleague, kind of current colleague, depending on the projects that we work on. I mean, she and I are both uh, were on a panel in speaking at Roots Tech coming up this year in 23 in Salt Lake City. And we work on various projects together. And she was my partner in crime for the for the TV show, Kentucky Ancestors. She and I did, did the research and then scripted it. And yeah, we were the heavy lifters. And she's been, she worked at, you worked at KHS for how many years? Six and a half. Yeah, so it's quite a long time. One, yeah, one or two, and you two were, years ago. You were probably here for the original teen, teen sympathy programs, weren't you? Did you come in the first one? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> pretty, pretty close after that. I mean, I know yeah. Lynn McCauley was like in the first ones, but yeah, I've got pictures I could dig out. We could find out some pictures there too. <laughs> That's true. Um, so today's topic is all about DNA, and it's kind, this is kind of an intro. Linda's going to go over a little bit about the various companies that are out there and the various tests that are offered and what those tests can, um, can give you or tell you about your ancestry. And as she, as she goes along and kind of explores some of that, well, the floor is always technically open for people if you've got a brick wall. And I have to say, if you've got a DNA brick wall, that might be a fun one too, since Linda, Linda's so <laughs> good at DNA. Um, and then we're going to cover the different companies that have got sales going on for the holiday season, because if you're going to beg for spit, this is the best time of the year because you're in the family group and you can just hand out those tests or wrap them up with a bow on top so that people can think they're getting something fantastic when it's very mercenary and it's something for you too. Um, so we're going to cover that as well, which means that some of the if you're watching this video later, that means that some of this content is time sensitive. So the sales will probably no longer apply. But I know we're going to get a lot of conversation about DNA and the testing. And um, right before Linda gets started, since it's such a small group, um, if everybody go around the room real quick and kind of introduce yourself and tell us where you're where you're coming from and uh, whether you've had your DNA tested and what companies that you have tested with. Um, I will, since I'm the one chattering away, I will say I'm I'm the library director here at the SAR library, and I have, I'm in Kentucky, obviously, in Louisville, and I have tested only with Family Tree DNA, um, but I have uploaded my results into other companies, such as MyHeritage. Um, who else? Who else have I done? That's crazy. You can't upload into Ancestry, so that's not possible. Jed match, Jed match. I have living I DNA. Think, nope, I don't think I did living living DNA. Maybe it's just the two. It's just the two, uh, and we'll talk about the difference with Jed match as well because that's another option. So, um, Jason, you want to intro yourself and let us know what you've done? Sure. Hello, my name is Jason Miller. I'm a member of the SAR, and hence I join uh, these wonderful discussion groups when I can. Um, I have done. Uh, 23 and Me was first, and then I did uh, Ancestry.com. And I'll say the difference uh, between the two that I've noticed is 23 and Me is really good for uh, for health and genetics, mm -hmm. and um, and also getting you know they did they also give you your well for men your Y DNA number, um, which has been helpful. In Ancestry, I, I find that one just good to connect with other relatives because there's probably more DNA relatives in there, but they don't really give you any other information other than, you know, if you're looking for what country your families might have come from or relatives, that's about it. Um, so I was looking at possibly doing another one this year because because those were five plus years ago that I did those. So I was looking for another company to maybe do this year. Um, and possibly testing my Y DNA strain to get uh, to get just more information on my paternal line, uh, because I've I've seen that uh, they come with a host of of uh, 
more benefits. One of them that I was looking at though, gosh, if you did the the, the premium one, it was over four hundred dollars. <laughs> love to do that one, but I don't know if I want to invest four hundred dollars to get a uh, to get an in depth Y DNA strain tested. Yes, um, I will say that I just bought that. My dad passed away last last year, mm -hmm. April, and I went ahead. He had tested with Family Tree DNA, but we'd only done autosomal. And I went and I bought the the big Y and it was, it was about the total. It was like $500. Well, I, I also added the mitochondrial on there as well. And so, and luckily his sample was still good. And so it's, um, everything went through just fine. And I'm very happy. I, in that case, I'm happy and I invested it, but boy, that was a hard one to swallow. That was a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that must've been the one that I saw, but yes. <laughs> it's Y700. Yeah. Yep. It'll be interesting to see what other people recommend as well. Thank you. Well, I'll go ahead and go. Uh, I'm Linda Colston, and uh, I've been fiddling with DNA for several years now and still consider myself ignorant in a lot of the areas of it because it is changing every single day. And um, I've tested at, tested or uploaded at Ancestry, Family Tree DNA, My Heritage. I've done living DNA. Um, if you want to, that's fine to get some additional matches. It It's not the one I would highly recommend to start out with just because it is newer than some of the others. And I'm, I'm Which one was that? My, I'm sorry, Linda. Living DNA. What, what was it? Living DNA. Living. Okay. I've living never DNA. Okay. And I said, let's see. And, oh, 23 and me. Can you guys hear me at all? Yes. yes. Welcome Yay. back. <laughs> Welcome back in. Um, living DNA, you see that a lot at the really big genealogy conferences. But yet, otherwise, marketing, you don't see a whole lot about them. And I think they do the marketing at their conferences big time. But I've done it, but I haven't really gone there much to, or gotten really anything more useful out of it on there. And I've uploaded, um, I managed several accounts on the various companies. And I've uploaded to GEDmatch, which is another good tool to use as well. But we can get into that in a little bit more detail. I want to hear what the where everybody else is at. So now that Sherry can talk again, we'll let her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next on my screen is Mary, is Mary Beth. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Beesler. I'm in New York. And um, I personally have done the Ancestry um, DNA um, test. Um, I won it at a conference thing that I went to. So that was just fun to do. Um, <laughs> and, um, and then get, you know, just the history, ethnicity information. Uh, but besides myself, a couple years later, I had my husband who was adopted um, do Ancestry DNA, um, which didn't get us much in the beginning. And then probably a year or so after that, we did um, 23andMe. Um, and then I realized you can upload this <laughs> from one to these other sites. It's like, shoot, I should have paid for it. Um, and I can't remember which ones we uploaded to, but definitely GEDmatch and some others. Um, and uh, once we did that, then some pieces started to come together and we did find his biological uh, paternal side of the family and maternal. Great. Side of the family. So it was great. great. Wow, that's great. What a great success awesome. story. I love that. Yes, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome. Uh, next on my screen is McGriffith. Hello. Hello. Malcolm. No. I'm uh, also with the SAR. I've done Ancestry with myself and the parental units and managed to break through two of my mother's brick wall lines using that. So that was good. Recently, I've expanded into the family tree with a big Y and mitochondrial, hoping to get past my SAR Patriots line. That's a whole new brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't expect it to be easy now, do you? I would have expected at least the surname, someone with the same surname to match. No. Uh, oh. All I can hope is that there will be more testing over the years, that something may come out of that. Well, yeah. and there's targeted testing, too. Yeah. And out, out of the was, three Ys I've done, only one of them came up with the surname I was expecting. I would have expected at least something tangential. 
you know, Griffith, Griffin. Yeah. Very, no, not even in the ballpark. So it's uh, very much a learning experience on that side. And the mitochondrial has me completely flummoxed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome very much. Um, and now I see Steph. Now she did comment. I'm not sure if she's going to join us. Oh, oh, her mic. Oh, okay, it's busy. Okay, gotcha. She's in Marion County, an hour and a half of, from Louisville. Tested Ancestry, 23andMe, and Family Tree DNA, and originally from North New Jersey. Welcome, so, yeah. welcome everybody. Um, I have, I have made you co-host, Linda, so you can. Kind of take it away and oh, Patricia joined us too. Oh, Patricia. Um, Patricia, she's connecting to audio. And in just a second, yay. There we go. So, Patricia, if you can hear us, um, we just did literally just got finished with a little go around the room uh, to introduce the, uh, introduce ourselves and, and to let us know, uh, well, where we are. Although, Maybe from your picture, are you in San Francisco? That would be really cool. Um, <laughs> and whether you have uh, tested your DNA already and which companies that you might have used. Is that for me? Yes. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I have tested with Ancestry um, DNA. Um, again, my name is Patricia King, and that's the only one I've done. Okay. Great. Awesome. Where are you coming from? Are you in San Francisco? No, I am in Huntsville, Alabama. Alabama. Oh. All right. Well, welcome. You're considerably Thank warmer you. than we are, I'm sure. We were in the team this morning. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still cold here. Cold. <laughs> it's too early to be this cold. That's just my opinion. Um, yeah. Anyway, so welcome. We are going to, uh, Linda Colston is going to kind of take away, take over for a little bit. She's going to tell us about the different companies and what they offer. And so, Take it away, Linda. Okay. Well, let's see here. Just uh, kind of as a brief overview, there are typically three types of DNA that is done at this point in time. That's the autosomal DNA, which is the one that is most common and goes through um, goes through about five or six generations, and that's one of the reasons why it's the most common. It's really good about up to the third cousin, generate about third cousin range. Then when you start to get the fourth and fifth, it starts getting decreasing in its uh, ability to identify matches and make connections, but it's still useful. It can still do it. It just depends on the inheritance pattern. And as most of you are probably aware, since you've been working with it, we get half the DNA from each parent, 50%, and then that point on, it is luck of the draw. It's usually about 25% and it decreases as you go up because your amount of grandparents decrease. So as you go back in time, you have less chance of inheriting it and usually a smaller amount that you're going to inherit. And so the autosomal is the one that is the most recent as far as being able to connect to current cousins and current people to take the lines back and find the third great grandfather that sort of thing. And that's what most of the companies focus on, especially Ancestry. And I think all of them have some sort of, they may call it something else, but it's all basically the autosomal DNA. The next probably most popular one is the Y DNA, which is for the fathers, 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 all the way back to the original tree, when you think about it, or trees. And uh, with the Y DNA, it is really evolving. It's made a big jump, jumping from there was a big Y test, and then it jumped up to big Y seven hundred within the past couple of years, which really examines the whole genome, which is the larger section. It looks at over seven hundred different locations in that piece of DNA. And so it is getting to the point where eventually it's going to work down and really make some good connections with people and maybe identify these surnames that we're looking for. Because it is so new, you reach a point where you can do a big Y. And I did the big Y in the one surname that corresponded. And we were part of a 
the Spencer Project, another Spencer in our same little grouping did it, and we created a new haplogroup. So the Spencer haplogroup that we have, there's only two of us in it at this point in time. So we've got to wait for other people to test to really do that. But what it does is it really breaks it down and brings the mutations are more focused. And that impacts what is, we've heard of as the haplogroup. And that's changed the way haplogroups are looked at now. When you go to 23andMe, they give you a guesstimate of a haplogroup. And basically, that's the broadest one. Usually, if it's RM, that's like European. And then each time it breaks down with a different number or letter, that's a mutation in the tree. And the way I like to look at it is you take a big, like, oak tree, and you take the trunk, and you work your way up, and as each branch goes off, that's basically like a mutation. And so every time there's a mutation, you get a break in the tree, and you work your way down, getting smaller and smaller. As you get smaller and smaller and closer in line, your haplogroup group grows in numbers. So you could start out with RM, I think it's RM35, something like that. And then you could increase to, which I'll give an example here in a minute when I pull up each of the companies. But that is one that is really showing a lot of promise now. And it's one that is a little bit uh, waiting game for it. The mitochondrial DNA, which is the mother's line, which is the mother's, 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 all the way back, just like Y, except for that one female line. It is helpful in ruling some people in and out, but because it is limited with just following the one line and the fact that you're not going to have a significant same surname all the way back, it's a little more complicated. One area where it does help is that when you are working your way back, there is a point where you can get some MT DNA results from the from a male line because males inherit the X from their mother. So you can get the mother's MT DNA to get her line back. If that's making sense, but I'll try to give some examples too as we're looking through these. Those are the three basic ones. Family Tree DNA has even said that even though their haplogroup has gotten is a little more detailed than what we see in the other companies, it's not really going to be the true haplogroup until you get up to the big Y700. So you'll have a smaller haplogroup. And so right now they have decreased what they offer. And um, I'll cover that in a minute because I'm going to find myself going in circles and you're all going to have to keep me straight on when I get off on these rabbit holes. So does so, mm -hmm. real question, question um, yes. so does that mean if the higher you test, or should I say the lower you test the Y <clears throat> with family tree DNA, does that mean that the haplogroup designation will be smaller and then when you test into like 700, because mine went from projected RM269, but by the time they fully finished testing everything in the 700, it went RBY74344, like it, it extended in its range. Is that right? Well, the lower amount, the broader the haplogroup is going to be. It's going to be more general. It's going to identify the oak tree versus the pine tree or something like that. Then as you get going in the branches, you're going to um, expand the, the uh, range of it. And sometimes you may find yourself going from what was one haplogroup to begin with into a different haplogroup, which I can show that on some of these as well. As long as everybody promises not to share any of this information or tell anybody that you know these people because I can't black them all out. <laughs> Oh, no, and it's being recorded, too. We just Ooh. won't share with it. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to share that. <laughs> you know, I actually have the capability to probably blur out the information if you wanted me to on okay. the, uh, in the editing. So just point it, out. It's really hard to explain some things without being able to give an example, and you don't want right. to give away some right. information right. with people. I can do that. I'll, yeah. I'll blur out some stuff in the editing. Okay. 
do you all want to kind of have a broad view of what each company, some of the tools and stuff they have with it, with what they test? Um, um, I think you. one of the things I, I'd like to briefly go over, I think, is a, um, a little brief history of some of these companies. Like, we know that Family Tree DNA was the first or oldest. They're the oldest right. testing company that was available on the market for people. So therefore, they have a really large pool of testers, um, and they were the only one doing Y for a long, long time, right? 23andMe is just now doing Y. Um, how long have they been doing Y? Well, they're not doing the Y testing. They just do, they take the DNA and give an estimated haplogroup with okay. it. It's not really a true haplogroup, okay. and they don't really do the Y testing. Okay. As such. So fam so family tree DNA, as old as they were, I think one of the things that I loved about them was because they've been around for so long, even in the early years, they had the cern the Y surname studies. And those, so each each group that's studying their own surname, they've got these little websites connected to family tree DNA and they're free. You can take a look at what lines those are being tested and you know who's matching right. and what this and I are, that to me is a really great research tool. I'd like that. Right. Um, well, let's start that, with Family Tree. Okay. About that. Yeah, cool. Several of you mentioned Family Tree. A lot mm -hmm. of you have worked with Ancestry, so you're probably familiar with Ancestry. Um, the one I didn't... And while, while she's doing that, um, and so we also know that Ancestry is the largest pool because their marketing has been the best out of all of them. Um, they're the largest well, company. They, they are the largest pool basically for here in America. True. My heritage is be quickly becoming the largest repository pool for, for Europe. European countries. Yeah. Um, and my heritage is based out of Israel. Um, they've been around a long time. They have been. Yeah. Um, but now they are growing quite a lot in the European market. So Ancestry is the largest pool here. So if you're interested in connecting with more people, Ancestry is always a, a good way to go. Um, we will cover, GEDmatch is its own thing. Jed is, GEDmatch is not a company right. you test through. It's the place you can deposit your raw results to, to match across some of these companies. Um, then there's, um, Jason had mentioned 23andMe, especially with the health aspects or components of 23andMe. That's how they got started was medical. And in fact, they got, they got in trouble when they first started doing that because they were promising things that they weren't supposed to be doing with medical. Uh, but then they, they, they got their they got their slap on the wrist and then they came back and they followed the rules and so now they're back they've been back now for years and um, so that's that's another really popular one. Um, we mentioned my heritage and then there's the the option of if you test with my heritage family tree living I guess you can re-upload. Not only can you upload all of these into GEDmatch, but you can then upload these results, Linda, into... The only one you can't upload your results into would be Ancestry. Is that correct? It very, it, come, it changes some, but yes, a lot of these you can actually just take your... And you can even download your Ancestry results and upload them into MyHeritage, Living DNA, and... Uh, I'm not sure if 23andMe allows it or not. No. I don't think it does because they they were the ones making the jumping in the gaps of how much of the genome they looked at. And then, so then apparently family tree DNA really got ahead of them on the Y DNA genome with it. But for a while there, the they, used, they called it a chip. The chip would be different where they examined more of it several years ago. But now they're pretty much kind of on the same page. Oh, and I have to interject one other thing. Um, Family Tree DNA was not the first one, actually. The first one was a National Geographic study. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Which a, lot of people, a lot of people did that. I, I was not one, but. And there's people. another one, too, that if you did that, you should be able to upload it to GEDmatch. GEDmatch is a privately owned uh, tool that allows you to upload from the various companies so that you can increase or get a different pool of matches. 
because you part of your goal is when you bet a brick wall, the more matches you have to be able to compare to, the better chances you have of finding something. So let me see. And I also like GEDmatch because it also connects your results with different studies that are going on that are analyzing DNA, um, doing uh, genome sequences and things, different labs that are doing this, even from around the world. Um, so sometimes you can pull out more of your ethnicity range on the Elda um, through by, by running the tests through these various labs that are connected to GEDmatch. And you get all kinds. I mean, and it wasn't until through GEDmax, GEDmatch sometimes will show you some of the lower percentages DNAs, even though those are not really very reliable. It's just, but it is kind of helpful to see some of the 1% range that some of the larger companies won't show you. Um, and that's fun. It, it's it's fun to do. Okay. Can you all see the family tree? More? We can. Family tree DNA. Okay. And this is my, yes. I am claiming connection to Lady Diana. And this is the one Spencer line that actually came all the way through. <laughs> but when you get into your results page, you'll see the autosomal DNA results. And these are basically the same results that uh, looking at it the same way Ancestry and the other companies do it. It's looking at the autosomal. Then you can scroll on down to the Y DNA test and they used to have a YDNA 12, 36, 37, 25, 67, 111, up to the big Y. They've done away with the 67. So now your only options are 37, 111, and the big Y. If you just want to rule somebody in and out real quick, if your research question kind of is, could this James... Bowman be a member of this Bowman family, you could do the Y. And when you look at the results, you have two ways of looking at the results. I prefer the table one, which is the older way, but it will bring up the people and you can see where the markers tested. And it's the same sort of tests on each person. They'll test 111 markers is what most of these have tested at. Up at the top, it'll tell you the smaller ones. And when you hit like the 12 markers, you're gonna see all kinds of, fortunately, they are mostly Spencers, which is good, but- uh, I saw a lot of England and Wales in there. Yep, and that's my line, die. England and Wales. They got dropped off in the Carolinas. But you wanna always work with the, with the people of the same testing level that you're at. So at 67, you want to compare these. The genetic distance is what you're looking at. And basically, another word for genetic distance is mutation. That's where mutation has occurred. That's where you guys are one or two or three generations separate from what the... Um, full match would be. So on when you're looking at these like AB Spencer, it's an exact match. We match all 111. If it's one step difference, we probably match 66 out of 67. When you hit one from the 111, you can look a closer range it is. If it's up to about between two and three, three is kind of on the edge there of being within a generation that you can possibly identify, like within the last five or six generations, possibly. When you get up to the big Y, it gets into showing you, you know, this is our, see here you've got the Y, RM269. Frank, is the other one we've created. This is the new half of group, RFTC36248, which is the big Y. When you see these on the results, you're going to, the smaller ones you can tell have not done a big Y, but the larger ones have. And if you notice there's an RP25 here, which is three steps. That may be fairly recent, but that may be 
generations back in time. And that's what you work with when you're looking at your matches on uh, the Y end of things. And it can tell you if there's somebody has a tree and you can compare the trees and look at it to see if you recognize some of the names and work with them that way. One which of the better always, ways to do, do it. Which is always an appeal for those of you who have got your results in there is for kindness sake, please go in and fill out at least a few generations of your tree yeah. so that people can kind of get an idea. I always suggest about five generations if you can. You I, can just, just, yeah. I really suggest if you're going to be working with DNA, take your tree out, go as if up to at least six generations if you can because five and six is going to be around the cutoff but you may get, be able to get to six and that may help you but fill out that tree all of those grandparents up to that point i would do that before you really start digging into a lot of the dna because when you get into the autosomal dna and we'll look at that probably on ancestry to get uh, a better understanding of it you're going to have all kinds of matches there and to narrow them down you want to be able to work with the matches so if you have those names surnames figured out already that's going to cut down a lot of the work is this your tree linda i mean or is this connected to your tree at all uh, are you are you a coddle i see a coddle in there oh i'm yeah this this is one we're connected okay because uh, i've got coddle which means i think we finally figured out where we're cousins ah the Caudles from Eastern Kentucky, there's a lot of those out there. Oh, yeah. Caudles and Caudel. With you. But let me show you the, um, just so you can see what the big Y looks like. The big Y can give you a big block tree because it's looking at so many different things. It looks at SNPs. It looks at STRs that you will see, the single, you know, single section, single grouping of them. It looks at the whole shebang. And in the afternoons, my computer runs slower because I think there's too many people out here. Oh, whoa, there it goes. That's actually not your computer. That is oh. the sheer amount of data and the servers on the back end. And it's oh, going okay. Because it's the big one. It's a big one. <laughs> it takes it's a big one. It's a big <laughs> one. Look in the, these are about the average, like generations back along the side. And these are the various, has it gotten more matches? Various things they have identified. And the one match that I have is over here where we match over on this side. And we don't know. Again, it's an alien DNA that we don't know where they came from. But if you look, you can see different countries. Sweden, Scotland, uh, United States. Questionable. That one's nothing, I guess. Uh, unknown origin. Germany. United States. So these are the areas and stuff that it is pulling in the ethnicity areas as well as looking at the different markers, all 700 of them on that whole genome. And if you do it, even with the other, just get around in there and play with it. Here's the haplogroup, RFT, come on. And you're not going to want to show it to me at all. You just again, it, it, okay. It's again, it's just the the uh, speed on the servers. It's chewing through a lot of data. Yeah, that's a whole lot of data there. That you can see the positives. The well, negatives. she is out. She is out in the boonies. In the boonies, though, she is. But I'm <laughs> she not high. Is <laughs> She's got two, she's got two obstacles there working against her. <laughs> Sorry, I'm career IT. This was one of those things I had to do day in and day out. 
<laughs> so you, and it, you could probably it's do really not your computer. It's not your connection speed. It is literally chewing through so many billions of, of records. It takes that long to process and format it to present to you. Okay. Heavy queries, man. Heavy. Yeah. Yes. So it's. <laughs> but it does take you, and it does. They've gotten a whole lot better as far as giving more information to where they can. You can learn more about your haplogroup, and it will explain the whole shebang of. Well, that didn't go as expected. It's wanting me to do the 129 MT DNA. Now, if I did my. You see all these sales popping up on her screen, yes. by the way. She's going yeah. around. One of them I noticed said that the early bird was over tomorrow. Yes. So that's early bird yeah. tomorrow through the 20th. I'm sure they'll have some more, but still. Yeah, bird. they'll do it again before Christmas yeah. and stuff. Now, so the again, I had one question about, um, okay, so like the Y-DNA results tool, you've got results completed May of 2013. Scroll up just slightly. Whee! See where it says uh, results completed 2013, because back then that's what you could test in 13. And then you've got the big Y completed in 2022. Because you'd already tested Y that early. I did just they upgraded. You, did they give you a discount? I mean, was it... Was there yes. Some sort of to get, okay, Every there. time they run a sale, um, and that's what uh, someone was talking about. Jason, I think, was talking about the price of it. I started out with the Y36. And then as they would run the sales, you get a discount upgrading it. And as long as they can, you know, the sample they got is good, then they can go ahead and just upgrade it without having to do the spit all over again. And so that's what I did. I finally upgraded these to um, up here. Now, let me show you the, um, the the downside for family tree DNA is that if you have more than one kit, you have to sign in and out of each kit that you manage. That's true. So that is one of the downsides, but it is worth it when you go into it. Now, let me get the other one. Okay. Now this is my first cousin. And I have not done that one yet as far as the big Y. But the Y matches, as you will see. The last name is H-O-L-E-T-O-N. So clarification. Yes, so please. when they upgrade, you don't have to provide a new sample. They just retest the sample that they already have. If it's good. If it, there's a problem with it, they will send you a kit to retest it. But I don't think they'll charge you for the kit. Mm -hmm. I think it's... Mm -hmm. Something went wrong. But yeah, that's exactly they use what the what they have. You know, table view. Now I said my cousin's surname is H O L E T O N. Do you see that anywhere on here? Now that can be due to several factors. One of it is these. Well, actually, this line, this is interesting because this line is the one exception line on the maternal side of the family because um, I'm discovering that this actual surname, which I thought originally because I thought every of them, all of them were German, Prussia background. This is the one that is not from England, but I don't have any surnames. And look how many steps, five steps. That's too far back to really know exactly where we intersect. So right now, I can't really do anything with the matches on here 
until I can get somebody closer. And so that's kind of why it's just been sitting there. Now, one thing you can do, like with the Spencer group, you can join a project. And this is what Sherry was kind of alluding to, a surname project. And you can actually Google and see if there's a surname project out there available. So there's the... Isn't that awesome? It knows exactly how to understand what I'm thinking. You can go into the DNA results and it's going to show you the charts. And this is people who are uh, kindly volunteered to coordinate these projects. And these are their the Y DNA results of the people who are participating in the project. Now in the Spencer <laughs> line, go ahead. And just keep in mind, remember, she Googled this. She, you did not have to have an account with Family Tree DNA to see no. these sites. This is something free. You can just Google and see if there's a study out there and take a look at the data. Because yeah, awesome. And you can see the EV13. Those in red have not done a big Y for the most part. Now, this one may be, I'm surprised that it is green. Maybe it's, they don't have the full results yet, but that they did upgrade to a big Y because it does take some time getting into it. And there's more, there's a lot more now than there were several weeks ago. But you can see a lot of these that went from RM269, this whole section right here, the haplogroup begins with E, M35, and then you've got B, Y on these that have gone. And they will take you through and all the way to, oh, no, you've got a lot of stuff to blur. All the way back there to, to, to accommodate for the big Y. And so you can see that these would have been the first 12, 37, 64, and you can see the numbers. This is the genetic distance. When you look at the mode up here, the general median up here is 13, 12. That's going to be genetic distance of one. Okay. And you go through up to the point of the number of where you all match. Now this one, these down here, you're only going to go this far and they all match on this. But when you hit, get further on, some of these don't even change until they go deeper into it. But anytime they are changing, that is going to be genetic distance. These with the double numbers mutate at a faster rate. So we look at them just a touch differently than we do the others because they do go faster. But this is how they determine the genetic distance is when you're comparing the basically the mode range to each of the people coming in for the matches. And, and you see how also the uh, the identifiers on the right where you see they're giving you they're identifying which ancestors are looking at. I mean they're giving you date ranges, sometimes yeah. who they married, like to identify the branches that people are testing that they believe all they that, are. Yeah, all of that is self-reported. Yes. So yes. take it. Yes. Yeah. Big grain of salt. I found that in yes. mine. Yeah, you got to be were, careful. We're declaring because. the same ancestor, and there's no way. Right. That's why they did the Spencer one because they broke it down into the groups where they matched via the Y DNA. So you get. You even got a comer down here. It's always kind of fun to see, you know, somebody that's reporting through the lines and. You got several several testers matching, and then all of a sudden somebody in there doesn't match a line. So you get to, yeah, you definitely can yeah. quickly identify some of those. Yeah, because you you've got and they're all Spencers. The majority of them are. Now you're going to find some, I'm sure, with different surnames that pop so up. Now when you when you said that your the two of you that, that tested under the Spencer line, you said you formed your own haplogroup. So yes. I'm going to ask 
the awkward question, are you sure that's not an MPE that is bringing, taking you, like separating you, or was it, was it that your haplogroup group was close enough to the other Spencers mm -hmm. that it was just one deviation to where you caught, it's not, it's not, it's not that you're not a Spencer, it was just, you right. could see that little mutation. Is that what you were right. saying? Right. See okay. the purple and the pink, mm -hmm. those are okay. ad identified mutations in it. And okay. See, here we are. Mm -hmm. right here our haplogroup now if these others would test mm -hmm. but now see this one mutated at a different branch so they're probably further back mm -hmm. but this is our own particular little leaf you could per say <laughs> for example a little branch with the leaf on it that's our own little branch right there until more people test and fall into that branch so it's a definite mutation from some of these others even though these others are RM269. Like I said, this is really relatively new. Uh, YouTube has a lot of great videos on understanding and trying to grasp what these are. And like I said, with a grain of salt, you want to take these names, but you can still use them. You can still kind of look at the trees. It gives you something to work with. They're clues, not exacts at this and, point in time. And the, R, the RM269 is very, very odd, correct? Because that was my, that was dad's projected haplogroup. Oh, but that's Europe, and that's where most exactly. of Exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's something to also remember. One of the most common ones. Mm -hmm. And if you get into, and the, um, the, there's a DNA wiki type uh, thing out there and for the life of me because I didn't write it down I can't remember exactly what it is on there but it's a wiki type setup with a ISOG that's what it is I-S-O-G-G -G. it's kind of like a wiki but it it goes into the explanations of DNA in so many different ways that can be helpful so depending on how you learn best other than hands-on you know that's very useful with that and in the video version, I'll go ahead and put that link across the screen so you guys can. Okay. Get Any that. questions on this? I mean, this is just a brief overview because I could go on for hours and some of this stuff. But it is very brief. And this, this is the only, like, Family Tree DNA is the only one that's doing this kind yes. of stuff with the surname studies. So that's something to just to remember. I mean, now, there may be, if you Google it, you may find some other kind of independent ones but you probably won't see as many because of it's going to be maybe different formats and stuff on it but because of the number of you know being the only one that does the Y DNA it's a whole lot easier to get the Y DNA results and add them to it because you are connected to the family tree DNA and then the MT DNA which I'll show you that real quick. Interesting. What's that much going? And that shows up and that's going to test if I did it it's my mother's lines her mother 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 on back with um if my brother tested it same thing if my first cousin did an mtDNA test Michael that we just looked at it would be his mother and her line all the way back which would not be a part of our line as such because she is the uh, one that married into the family so those can take different routes, but you can also check them to see where um, you can rule people in and out, especially if you're looking like for a uh, potential mother between two women, depending on when the child was born. Now, this is my results. And again, genetic distance is zero, which is probably further back. My haplogroup is K2B1. And 
because these are two or more, it's three or more, they're probably going to be further back. So I, I don't really have a whole lot to work with because I can't tell anything about the surnames. And you've got, um, you also got the patronymics that comes into play, which is what I was going to mention earlier with the um, various different surnames and stuff that, example I always use is in Germany, in a lot of the small villages, because land was so scarce, families did not want to let go of it. They wanted to keep it in the family, even if they only had daughters. So what they would do is the daughter, the man, the daughter married would drop his surname and pick up the daughter's surname so that they could keep the land in the same surname, in the same family. So he's going to carry that surname on down, even though that may not be his real surname. So that could be one of the reasons why you don't bring up the Smith surname that you expected to bring up. And of course, the other reason is the non-parental event uh, where at some point in time, you know, orphans got taken in by the neighbors and they were raised as their own and just carried on their surname. And so that's why you kind of have to look at it look at it from a broad perspective to see what kind of what was going on at the time what kind of situations could evolve and sometimes you can kind of see where it comes into play too it just takes a lot more work trying to figure out what surname is there and sometimes you just have to accept it you know that's what it's going to show so this one is more limited in its use right now simply because of the way of trying to name and identify the individuals and looking at just that one maternal line. But it does come in handy as far as ruling theories in and out. Any questions on the maternal? Nope. See, now with Sherry's case, she was talking about her dad. His maternal DNA is actually going to be Sherry's grandmother her line all the way back. Whereas if Sherry did the mtDNA, it would be her mom's line all the way back. So she's getting two additional lines back just by doing that. And it, it works out only on that one particular generation because they only inherit the X the one time for a male. And then it goes, divides up and moves on down. Questions, everybody's quiet. Have I confused you totally? Rambling, talking nonsense? You, you can clear something up for me. I'm going back to my grammar school biology. You're mentioning that the MT test is on the X chromosome. I don't know that no, that's, no, that's, it's okay, not that's on the why X it's coming across. Yeah, it's on the mitochondria. Right. But it's not chromosomal in the nucleus of the cell. It's its own DNA. Right, right. It's okay. the... It's the white of the egg. The yellow is the nucleus. The white is where the mtDNA comes from. But you only get that from the mother. Correct. Okay. So you get that from the egg, basically. Right. And so that's what's going to be passed down to the son. But the son's not going to pass it down because he's going to pass down his. So it kind of stops there. Is that making any sense? Yeah, just I'm hearing mtDNA and X and, and the X. And to me, those are entirely separate because they're coming from separate cell structures. Right. But when you're looking at the tree and stuff, you're kind of looking at it as, you know, being the female line coming down the X. It It is a bit confusing on there. But you're you're exactly right in that it is its own test and only on the females, but to identify the females and what the females that take that test, what it's going to show on is uh, broadly connected to the X in a sense. Because you have your Y is the male and the X is the female. And the female would have two X's and the male has one X. So that X would come from his mother as opposed to from both, whereas the female, um, the 
mitochondria would separate the mothers from the X received from the other line. Yeah, the, the other reason I, I put it that way is in discussions with other folks, I've had to, to make very clear that in the case of daughters, an X is received from both the father and the mother. Right. So when you, when you say it's the X, that it's, can confuse the daylights out of somebody. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get them. Um, make myself clear sometimes. <laughs> my mind is going blank. I get it straight in my head and it doesn't always make it out the mouth the way I want it to. Hey, repeat that again. So, I mean, I understand the X, 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 and the X, Y. And so you get, girls get the X, X, but it stops at the male because you only get one side of the X. Is that what you're saying? Okay. When you get an X, for a male, it's an X and a Y. You're getting that that X you're getting from the male is from the mother. Correct. And the Y is coming from the father. Okay. So that mother that you're getting that from is the only one who is passing down that what could be the mitochondrial part of it that could be tested to determine her mother's 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 mother. Okay. The X that you get from the, the double X's, it's almost the same thing, but it's one X is coming from the mother and one X is coming from the father. I think I'm confusing everybody now because I think I just confused myself. I guess I guess the way I would, because uh, this question has been coming to me, is, okay, so for the female line, you've got two X's. Where do they come from? I mean, when it's a man with X and Y, we know that that X is coming from his mama, 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 mama. Right. So when it's a female, where are those X's coming from? Are they coming from my mama's mama? Like, do both X's come from my mother's 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 mother's? Or is one of the X's coming from my dad's mama? Can, can I take a shot at that? Go for it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes. this, this is the collective, the so yes. This is the, this is the exact reason I raised the question earlier, chromosomally from a, a cell nucleus, okay, you're, you know, what makes you you thing? You, as a female, you get an X chromosome from your father and an X chromosome from your mother. That's why you're an XX. However, from a mitochondrial standpoint, that mitochondrial DNA outside the nucleus, inside the mitochondria itself, comes strictly from the maternal line. So in Linda's earlier comments, it follows the mother's X chromosome, though they are not the same thing. Right. Gotcha. Okay. That's good. It, it's the egg white. It's the only one that's going to have yeah. the egg white. <laughs> awesome. This, this is the, this is the See, beauty of the, of the genealogy tea time. This is where exactly. we everyone. This is the high <laughs> should have got him to explain <laughs> to that. And, and help, help uh, clarify things. Absolutely. Yeah. This is, so that, this is, that For me, that's why I, I tend to never say X and mitochondrial in the same word, in the same sentence. I'll always say maternal line. Yeah. Matrilineal line. Yeah. Because it takes that out of the that whole thing out of the, the discussion. Yeah. And for me, it brings it up when I get to looking at it, it's kind of going, well, how do I determine where that comes from? And that's when I'm looking at the X and the Y on the chart. Mm -hmm. So it's it is just however everybody's brain works. <laughs> and mine works on a different platform, I tell you. <laughs> I'm no surprised mine works at all. <laughs> Sometimes mine okay. spins like that screen of hers, and so <laughs> did, did that clear it up for you? I think it was Patricia was asking that. Yeah, but you know what? I'm gonna go back and take some more notes, and I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> it it takes... I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw me a diagram. That's yes. what I'm gonna do. Yes. Yeah. It's it takes a bit of digesting it, and. 
really thinking about it for it to sink in. Okay, so those were the two of the other tests. Now, um, you know, when you're thinking about where to test from, it all depends on, and I'm going to switch to Ancestry here, which you can see they've got a sale going on. Oh, look right at all now. these sales coming through. <laughs> 59 right now. And they, they're trying to compete with 23andMe with the health aspects of it. So you can do the additional there if you're interested. We're seeing in general almost almost 50% for these companies so far. Yeah. This is a really good deal. And that's about what they do. So with, the, with Ancestry, when you're looking at the autosomal, uh, you know, as I mentioned early on, you get... It goes back and what you, as you go back in time, the less chance of inheriting from it, you're going to inherit DNA from first cousins with second cousins, you know, basically from the first grandparents, great grandparents, third time great grandparents. It's more than likely you will, but there is also the possibility that you may not inherit DNA or share DNA with somebody with that. And that increases the further back you go from that line to fourth and fifth grade grandparents. So that brings in, you know, the amount of DNA that you may inherit. Just kind of a brief overview on some of this. DNA, autosomal DNA does have certain limitations with it. Um, DNA painter is a great tool if you've never used it and it is on some of the other um oh he's, he's moved him around on me here this kind of chart um tells you helps you at, helps you try to figure out what relationship you have with a cousin the amount of dna shared the number in the middle is the average number but you also want to consider the range. And Ancestry will give you that when you're looking at a match. It'll give you, you know, how many centimorgans you share. And they measure it in centimorgans. But if you look on the chart here, you're going to see that so many of these overlap. Because if you share 64 centimeters with somebody, then... These are all the possible people, relationships you might have with that match, which makes it kind of, it looks like an intimidating task until you just take it step by step and start working your way down to be able to work with it. Getting familiar with the overall values helps a whole lot. And this is part of the reason too, why you want to get your tree back because you want to be able to look at your tree in relationship with the matches. So where, go ahead. so where is that DNA painter? It is just put in googlednapainter.com and you can get a free version of it. Uh, to get the most up-to-date version of it, you want to do the beta, which is over here on the left. Now, um, they have got a newer one. Well, that's what's popped up now is where you can actually compare two. That has come out within the past week or two where you can actually put in two uh, percentages. But you always want to kind of go to the beta with the most updated probabilities to see where it is. And this can also help you kind of see where your cousins might fall into because you're going to have to rule them in or out. Ethnicity. So I have, okay. So I would, I would have painter. I will open up painter. Then mm -hmm. I will go back to the results and then start comparing the results to what's in the painter blocks. Is that how I do it? I would encourage you to do that. Partly because you've got two different screens open, but when you go into a match, you're going to have the same sort of thing on the match. Let's pull up Michael. 
Well, now, okay. This is what comes up when you flip this match, when you click on the centimorgans. Ancestry is really trying hard to uh, provide some good tools. When you look at the shared 296, you're going to see, and this is just a little, they have got a, a special algorithm. Um, what did they call that? Timber. They call it the timber algorithm. That any um, match below 90, and this one's above 90, let's get below 90. It won't be hard. It's going to be harder than I think. Here we go. And while you're looking, um, one of the things I think that that um, that Patricia is asking as well. I, so DNA Painter is a third-party tool that you're using. Is right. it is it is it an uploadable tool? Like, do you take your raw results and upload in? No, or is no. this, you're going to show us something no. that you're going to capture, right? And That's right. So I can do it. Right. Ancestry has a special algorithm called the timber. The timber is what it has created to help us try to identify when endogamy, pedigree collapse, or multiple relationships come into play. All of those impact the results of the DNA. That name is hilarious now that you explain what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like timber. We're going to knock these out. <laughs> what it is, it's going to get, compare all of those matches with what could be like smaller matches that could be either um, error prone or, you know, false positives. It could be matches. It could be centimorgans that everybody shares. Or it could be because you are related to them or impacted by one of those three, endogamy, pedigree collapse, or multiple relationships. Because if you're, you and your cousin, or you and your spouse are related as second cousin and then a third cousin, that's going to skew the centimorgans because you're going to inherit from both of them. And that's going to give you kind of a, usually sometimes a, higher percentage of centimorgans than actually inherited from each one individually, just depending on how it was done. So they give you the unweighted, which is the actual centimorgan shared with it. But the shared is going to be the timber applied, which means that you have got about eight centimorgans that are, could be pedigree collapse, multiple relationships. So you want to consider that when you're looking at the results. So that kind of gets a little deeper as you get into it. But another important thing to look at is the longest segments. If you, you don't, if you have, like in Eastern Kentucky, if you have big, big, big chance of having all three, which I have all three. I've got three lines that go directly to the same Spencer. I've got a uh, small area, Eastern Kentucky. Everybody, you know, in that community married over and overrelated. Then you've got multiple relationships of, you know, this family married into this family two or three times. That's going to impact things. Typically, you want to look at something if you're learning how to do it, as you're learning how to do it and getting more familiar with it, I would encourage to start with nothing lower than 15 centimorgans, unless you really feel comfortable looking at it. Some say 10, 15 is a good number, but if you have any of those three above, you want at least 20 centimorgans because you've got all those, you've got, you know, like I said, false positives, you've got all these other things that come into play that can rule out the relationship because there's some of those small centimorgans or things that we all share or we share because we're from the same area or, you know, uh, you're related to the person going back to the same uh, ancestor a couple of times. 
So I try to focus on starting out using, you know, nothing less than 20 centimorgans. And then when I look and see the pedigree collapse, I want to look and see how those centimorgans are spread out. That's 81 with six centimorgans, but there's a little bit of possible pedigree collapse in that. Okay, so that's where that's going to help you. You're not going to see that in other companies because this is specifically an ancestry tool that helps. But this right here, you will see, and this is their version kind of of like the DNA painter. But let me, let me see if I can get these sideways. We'll do this. We'll do this. And that's something you're going to see a lot across these tools, uh, lots, a lot of across these different companies, is that they're all trying their best to come up with new tools that can help you analyze your results. Um, you know, I guess to put something like DNA Painter out of business, although he's been doing this for a long time. So I don't think they'll be able to do that, but they're trying their best to bring on some new ones. Right. Even Family Tree DNA have come up with some new tools um for comparisons and everything and that's really cool um so you said this is like the equip this is this is ancestry's attempt to do something like dna painter oh here we go okay yeah. so she's putting in the 81 i put it the 81 let me get this see if i can get this smaller here okay and, and then I this just, was can this I was back on ancestry and see there's a little bit of a difference 43 percent versus 41 percent Second cousin one times removed, half second cousin, uh, second cousin one times removed. So it's some of the same, but one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So they're getting better about being more consistent in what they're showing. And can you show us real quick? Because I see Blaine's name over here. So when you got the DNA painter, where did you go to do this? This is the DNA painter. Yeah, I know, but in DNA Painter, like, did you just, like, from the main oh. site, when you got, when from you the main site, <clears throat> you go to the shared CM tool. Okay. Now, this new one is the double one. But I go into shared CM tool, and then you go into the beta option, and you and do 89, and you, you also get a more of a visual where you could plug... Oh yourself in and see the options second okay. uh half second cousin would be over here okay. so you would share great grandparent with that person and you plug that into your tree and if you've got your tree filled out then it's like okay well i know the great grandparent for this so i need to be looking at one of these lines for it does that make sense? But it, it always helps to double check. And plus, like I said, you get a little bit of a different visual. So it. how do you know what side to look on? I mean, what side to focus on? What do you mean, what side? What, what Which side? ones to focus on the, which block? I understand the percentages. Okay, so 45%. Are you saying that if you don't know which side it, if you don't know which side these matches are coming in on? Is that what you're asking? What side the matches come oh. in on or which one of these um, over here, the blocks to focus on? What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to rule in or out these different relationships. Say that again. You're gonna have to, basically, if you can't identify the person where they fall, if it's not somebody you already know where they fall, like a first cousin or something, you're mm -hmm. gonna have to kind of rule these in and out. And this is how this will help you rule those in and out, is by placing mm -hmm. them in different family lines with the different groups. Of possibilities put them in a if it was a second cousin who could possibly be a half second cousin of mine with the second cousin you would share a third great grandfather i mean i'm sorry first 
second cousin would be a great grandparent. You'd share a great grandparent with the second cousin. So of my great grandparents' kids, which one of those siblings of my parent could that cousin be coming from? That making a little bit of sense? And in that case, don't you need tree? I mean, trees to kind of compare. That's that why you, you need your tree and possibly and their, their tree. trees. And so you're seeing a zone. So when you put in this number, you're seeing the zone of how they could be connected to you. And it basically shows both sides of the tree, right? Because at this point, we don't yeah. know which yeah, side the tree. Put, now, Ancestry will try to help you with this. Mm -hmm. They will show you if you have a common ancestor. So. This cousin and I, I need to ideally now remember, just like in the surname project, those trees were iffy. These comparisons are based on what's been put in the trees. So they're not always going to be correct. You still have to do your research on this. But I can go in and actually, we do come down to. First cousin, twice removed, is my relationship with this person. Now, to, okay. if you're new at this, I would start with people you know how you're related to. So that you can kind of start looking at the trees if they have a tree. If they don't have a tree, then you may have to build one. But that's why I would start with people that you know how you're related to them so that you can get familiar with doing that. And then some of it you might only have, you know, it may only have gone up to Alexander Kapitsky. But then you can take that tree further back to see where you would share the grandparent at. Does I'm that make sense? I'm trying to remember, uh, Linda, I know that if you have your parents tested in ancestry as well as yourself, Mm -hmm. that any matches will automatically flag as maternal or paternal line. You know, matching on the mother, matching would, on yeah. the father. Okay. I'm trying to remember if it has that for either only one parent tested or no parent tested. They've got a new beta thing out where they will tell you parent one, parent two, both sides, and unassigned. So that's what I was going for. I couldn't remember whether it showed it, yeah. whether you had the parents tested or not. Well, now but they've it, got the edit where you can actually identify. This is new, brand new. Yeah. Okay. That's what so I was we, trying to remember how it worked. Well, you can say maternal or paternal. Before then, they have another tool that comes in handy. That is the dot system which they've increased, mm -hmm. where you can assign dots to a particular group. Like my cousin Julie's a first cousin. I can put her in the maternal line, and then you can sort them by groups. If you've got, it, this is why I like Ancestry too. And my heritage has their unique way of working with matches. But this is why you want to go back five to six generations as well, if you can, because if you can just go and click on an unknown or a known starting out, and you get to look at it, 421 centimorgans. Okay, let's click on Tristan here. Always check the ethnicity as well, because the better they get at ethnicity, the more useful it's going to be. And if you're looking for a grandparent further back, you might end up being able to consider, oh, maybe I need to look at the Germanic line if this is further back and I'm not being able to place them. But they also had the shared communities. Part of my problem is mine tend to overlap, although I finally <laughs> got a West Prussia community. But, <laughs> but Eastern Kentucky, you may as well forget it. That's where we go. But the shared matches, these are people that you and the match share DNA with. 
And depending on where it falls into place, you can, you know, make all these dots and automatically put that group with a particular grandparent if you want. And when you're working with a particular question, and that's kind of where DNA comes into play is if you're thinking about getting DNA, it really helps to figure out why do you want to get that DNA? Are you looking for a specific answer to a question? Are you wanting to just get it to fill out your tree? What is the purpose for getting the DNA? Because as you start to work with matches, if you're looking for and have a particular question, you might want to do more of a targeted testing as far as asking somebody in particular to get a test, ruling in or out to see if they're related. Now, a few years back, they used to say, well, it didn't make any difference if you did your siblings or not. Well, that's coming to become more of a factor because if you do your siblings, and your sibling matches you and at least one or two other siblings, you can always, that can help narrow you down the relationship as well. Because if it's a first cousin once removed, then it should be that with each of your siblings. If it's not, then you've got to really look at it a little deeper to figure out what's going on. Because what you're trying to do is figure out where they fit in the family tree and at what level. And if it is... I better not say that because I can't remember the exact number. But that's where the uh, DNA painter comes in too, because you're going to want to look for, you know, if it's like 73, it can go anywhere from zero to 234. When you're looking at the charts, focus on the top one or two percentages, the highest ones first because that's where most of the people tend to fall into. That doesn't mean they can't, but it's going to be one of those that you're probably going to have to dig deeper to figure out why they would fall below the others. But generally speaking, you'll have better luck placing your people and ruling in and out these first eight first. That makes sense. I think that kind of was where Patricia might have been headed a minute ago. Yes, one more question. Okay. How how do you group? I mean, I see it, but I didn't know what to do with it. As you, the grouping on in, in, in ancestry. So you got dots. your DNA. So how do you group? Okay. I started out grouping what they can do for you now, the maternal and the paternal sides. Okay. Because if I'm looking for a third great grandfather and that's on the paternal side, I want to knock out the maternal side. I don't want to have to look at the maternal side if it's on the paternal side. So the first thing I want to do is knock those out, cut it in half. Well, probably my, ideally it would be half, but depending on how people take, how many people have taken DNA matches, it could be more or less. That's the first step. It's identifying the maternal and the paternal side. And this is what I did early on before they had the um, parent one side and that kind of stuff. So now I can go back in and say which parent. Then from there, I want to look at, start, that that cuts your grandparents down, cuts them in half, right? You go, because we go yes. up, we have grandparents. Yes. Yeah, you cut them in half. Well, to cut them in half again, then you want to take that set of grandparents and you want to then find the matches that are related to those. And the easiest way you start with the top of your matches to work down. Start with identifying okay. right now I go into all matches. Some of these it may be both sides, but I have not discovered it yet. And these may be ones that just haven't been assigned. But I go into matches and I start from the top down. And, you know, my brother and I were both sides. My uncles, I know 
My uncle is on the paternal side, so I can go into him. I can do shared matches. And I could technically give all of these guys a dot, but I would, I'd kind of jump down to, um, they should get a little bit, well, actually all of them, because you never know who's going to fall into it, the close family, and just give them all a dot. Do you use Chrome as the? Um, no, I use um, Firefox. Okay. Chrome has an add-on extension that can do this for you. Otherwise, you've got to go in and just assign it to a group. And you identify the groups, however you want to identify them. And see, some of these, I've got the grandparent couple. And that's what I start out with is a grandparent couples to divide them up. And then when I get down to them, then I could take the one couple. And all of these people should have. I don't have many people in that group yet. But I, I take the paternal side. Then I go down and get a particular couple. And because I got endogamy, some of these do overlap. That's and not I, endogamy. That's pedigree collapse. Well, there is some endogamy in it as well. Because endogamy does con include smaller communities that tend to be in a general area for multiple generations. As the meme goes, por que no los no dos? No. <laughs> Why not both? Yeah, well, they, they, kind of, they thump them all three together because they kind of do overlap. But you see, I pull up the green which was jet crawford line and then uh the longest segments and you can identify different ones this is also this one's falling into two lines so it's probably it could be multiple marriages or whatever but it falls both in the spencer and the hobbs line and this narrows down the number of results i have and you just kind of go back to you're looking for the person that you want to get so if i was wanting to look for say I was looking for um who do I not have here? We'll say I was looking for Sherman Watkins. I would want to get down to Sherman and Mildred's, identify the, those that match these two, and then I would narrow it down again to, because say I didn't know who Sherman was, but I knew Mildred was the spouse, then I could narrow down hers. What I had left ideally would belong to Sherman. So you're actually cutting these in half, in half again, and then whatever area you're looking for, cut them down again, and that cuts down the matches you're looking for. And you can use the dots to identify those that you can rule out. And then when you're left with um, nothing, that's what Diane Southern calls the Diane Southern calls your leftovers which is the matches you want to then focus on identifying does that kind of help patricia again it's a very broad view of a way of working with matches but this yes. so do you create the dots yourself yes yes okay. you can create the dots yourself you can assign any color to them that you want that's of the choices. And I think you've got like 24 colors and they've just recently added all these others in. But then when you narrow it down, you could always do unassigned as well. You've not, and then see when you've got these others, 
that also lets you know who you need to work for, which knowing my uncle, I just hadn't, didn't really fool with that. But Tristan on the maternal side, public tree, private, 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 lots of privates there. That's when I would have to go in and investigate. Now, another helpful thing is when you're doing this on Ancestry, when you've got a list of matches that you're looking at, let's get a group. I make notes on them to kind of tell what I'm thinking or if I send them a message, or what the possibilities are. But you can but you can also go through and you know scroll on down and decide and see where you have new matches within the shared oh, matches. Oh, oh, oh. But oh Abraham J. I saw a big note. Go back up a little bit. Because she just paste it though. There we go. Yeah, Abraham J and Elmira. Gotcha. So they don't have most current to... date on Matthew, his mother's relationship to Fred. Yeah, that's kind of dots. You see the dots you've attributed. The pencil is adding that note, right? And then right. what's the star? The star is if you want to highlight one that might be very confusing. Okay. I made the mistake of starring a bunch of them at first, so I really need to start. But you can always, the downside is, and they're working on trying to get them to uh, make, not make this a downside. But right now, you either have to eliminate all the math, all of the dots, but now you can remove them from the group. But um, they're trying to get it and work it so that you can have more control of the groups. Because before, originally, it was, if I wanted to change the names of the groups or whatever, I had to erase all of the dots and start over. Now, some people, they only, they do that. They only, If they got a particular question, they only focus on dots for that question and ignore the others. But if you're trying to pinpoint everybody, then you've got, uh, you can go to scroll down and see where you're missing some or look for the unviewed ones and see where they may fall. But as you go in, pay attention to those that have public trees. When you're looking at all of these matches and you're trying to figure out who's where, no tree, kind of set that to a side for a minute. Look at unlinked trees, private trees, you'd have to contact them, but focus on this largest centimorgans in that group. And then look for common public trees. And that's going to help you get started on identifying these. Because if it doesn't have a tree, then you may have to, um, you may contact them. They may not contact you back. Or you can um, build a tree out. But that is going to require a little bit more work. So work with the clues that you've got, knowing that you still have to verify. Another tool that you can use with it is the um, through lines. And again, it helps the further back you go. And you can get into through lines and see the couple kind of both share nine matches. So you kind of have to get in there to detail which one belongs where. And you've got an idea of which matches go with that particular line and that can also help you um, tag the matches too. Through lines is also built on what people have put in their trees. Exactly. That's why you so, have to verify everything. And it does whether, have quirks. Hey, this whether the trash trash in, trash is... out. Sorry about okay. that. Go ahead. Patricia, whether through lines um, con makes the connection, whether the tree is private or public. Uh, 
I believe it does. I think it does. You still have to contact them for that. This is one of my mistakes that they have yet to clarify. In, um, oh no, wait a minute, maybe they did. For a long time, I had three LSs here because one of my uncles tested twice. And what they did with that was they made him my father as well as my grandfather. But I think they, they may have got that figured out now because these are my uncles, but I had a third one there and my dad didn't test. I didn't get him tested before he passed. But my uncles both had tested. But follow these. If it's dotted lines, like here you've got Terrence and private. You can still sometimes get clues from the private, but these are ones that are suggested and you really need to evaluate. And you can also, go ahead. One thing that Malcolm was saying about this being user contributed content here. Um, if you can briefly, we're running, uh, yeah, we have, eh, little, about 20 minutes. Um, but if you could briefly explain the difference, we were working on one of the episodes for season two and it had to, it was a far back case. Um, you had, we were trying to determine which brother might be a father. And remember, through lines kept pointing to one person being the, the father. And then you had the person at the account, you had them switch their content over to this other, to the other brother that was suspected. And then suddenly they all matched as well. So it really greatly shifted what that looked like based on the tree information that someone had contributed. And that's something, as Malcolm says, You've got to really, really be careful with the through lines. This is like the shaky leaves. This yeah. is something that you've got to make sure this is not a definite that you've got homework to do in this kind of case. And one thing, too, that um, if you're getting down, even on current levels, first, second, third generations back, if you've got two brothers, you may never be able at this point in time tell which one could be the father because of the amount of DNA that they would share. When it comes to siblings and stuff, the DNA doesn't say, doesn't give you specific details of which, I mean, unless you wanted to possibly map it out on chromosome mapping, but even then it's kind of difficult to tell which brother may be the father. You know, you, you're going to run into that when you're trying to find some of these people you can't figure out. You're going to come up with several males in the family that could be it. I'm working on one now that there's quite a few that could kind of come into play as being the father of the individual we're looking for. And I'm still trying to figure some way because we know who the mother is. And sometimes you can take the wife. And that can help you or the spouse and help you determine which brother it is. But you still, no matter what you do, you have got to do regular genealogy. You've still got to do the paper trail. And kind of the rule of thumb with DNA autosomal is the further back you go, the more you're going to start focusing on the paper trail as opposed to the DNA with the exceptions of, well, even with the Y and the MT, but especially with the autosomal, because DNA will fall off after certain points. It'll get so small that it's negligible. That doesn't mean you weren't, don't have that Native American prince. We know you don't have princesses, but you may have a Native American prince per se, but it may be too far back for you to have inherited any DNA from them. What Just I was like, going for, too, though, not, not to interrupt, but more insidious for me, is even taking the example on the screen where SM and MT are related genetically. Okay, Megan and Samantha are, are related. The DNA doesn't lie. They share something. Right. Going back into the trees because it's built on what people have put in their trees 
whether there's evidence or not, I get to a certain point on one branch where we don't know. There is no paper trail on who a particular ancestor is, but because someone said it once and other people took it to be true, you hit this and it's going, oh, you've got ancestor Jaylee. Well, yeah. there's no proof of that, that that's right. Yeah, yes, we're related, but it doesn't have to be Jaylee. Right, because you could be related to another line you're unaware of, or you could be related to two different ones. And notice that these two are kind of close to the same generation. So I'm, well, mm. this year-wise, it's the same generation. 1922, that's not bad. But you go over here and you've got 39. You know, be pay attention. Here you've got 114, maybe a closer relationship. But watch the Cinemorgans. And this is something, too, where you can put that into... Um, DNA painter and say, does it fit that this person is, you know, related to me? Does this fall within the range? And another thing is you want to look at what uh, a lot of uh, DNA folks call the generation of connection. If you are in the same generation, like Mary is, was born in 1920, Ledford, 1921, and that's usually like a 20 to 30 year period is what's kind of considered a generation. If you're in the same generation, then it's going to be a cousin, first cousin, second cousin, third cousin, whatever. If you are a generation above it or below it, that becomes the once removed. Okay? So if you are Ruth, and she is in the same generation as Mary, they're going to be cousins. However, Kayla is going to be one, two times removed. So she's going to be that cousin twice removed. And the same thing with um, going up. If it was down here and up here, it would be the cousin generation wise and then the number of times removed and through lines and that's one thing too Patricia is I would kind of keep an eye on through lines to help you get going in this as well take some of these through lines which helped me a whole lot and actually take the tree down to see if you can get it down to this person And there are ways of getting getting current. If you use like Spokio and People Finder and stuff, you can put those people in and not even have to pay for the service. It'll just bring up general information. And if you can find them and look at their relatives and overlap the relatives, then you can get, sometimes get an idea of how old they are or um, more information about them to know how to connect them. I mean, it, it's a, um, there, there's a lot to it. It takes a lot of time to do it. But the best thing you can do is whatever one you go with, get familiar with the tools that that particular company has, and then get on YouTube, um, Family Tree webinars, you know, lectures, conferences, Get in there and play with a lot of them and, and work with things that you know at first. We've got about <clears throat> 10 minutes. Um, if you want to show them really quick my heritage, what it looks like. Um, again, like we said, um, Ancestry is the only place you can't upload your raw results from these other places you test. But um, several of them do allow you to upload those to where you can participate. Family Tree DNA allows you to upload. But if you wanted like the full mapping and things like that, you'd have to pay about like 20 bucks uh, to, to participate in the different tools they've got. So explore what is allowed there. And each one of them, I tell you, GEDmatch is a really great place to learn per company where how you go retrieve those raw results so that you've got those. Yeah. Um, and that's just a good idea to download your raw results and keep them in a safe place. 
as far as a, as a file to where over the years you can technically upload them different places if you need to and, and just make sure you've got those backed up well, but it's not a bad idea anyway. So here's yeah. my heritage. Yeah. yeah, this is my heritage. Each one takes a little bit of getting used to, but you can review the DNA. They will give you who else it appears in the family tree with. Um, kind of show you the centimorgans. Now, the only one, all of these companies will show you the centimorgans except for 23andMe, and they give you the percentages on it. But they will, 23andMe doesn't really work a whole lot with matches as far as providing tools, but my heritage and ancestry are probably and Jed Match are probably top of the line when it comes to working with them. And they give you the, I think this is the one that's a theory of, yeah, theory of relativity of how they're related to you. Kind of showing first cousins, second cousins. This is our relationship where it falls. So right here, we're on the same generation of connection that makes us first cousins, one below. So first cousin once removed. Can you see that? Okay. Is that making sense? Yes. Okay, and you hit and other they're showing you shared surnames, ethnicity, I mean where they're located, communities also, which is on um, ancestry as well as communities, shows you a current location, which can also help. It doesn't go into, it does migration too, doesn't it? Or am I thinking of family tree DNA? They do. Somebody uh, does migration. I'll show ancestry you migration. does. Ancestry, okay. Yeah, ancestry can show you the, um, let's go back to. Which is really kind of cool. So if we take the Germanic one, they can show you here. And you go down to, okay, it's going to show you that, but you go all the way down. Here they've also divided your ancestry into divided by the parent, parent one and parent two. So if you're, this is my maternal side that I said I thought was all Prussia and Germany and stuff and there has to be my grandfather's one one because he's the only one that's not that one line his line and that's one that overlaps over here too but it can also start showing you the breakdown on the chromosomes parent one parent two and this can help you when you're trying to figure out, why can't I find that person? Well, maybe I need to look for somebody possibly from Scotland That's or really Ireland. Cool. That might help with my mystery Italian. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's really cool. And you can take it and focus on particular areas as well as all of them. And then um, that's why I can stay in ancestry a whole lot. Get down <laughs> here, communities. And this is wow. like Poland. And see over here, it can kind of yes. give you the years. And then you saw um, where they showed up over in the United States and where they yeah. migrated to. And I've top. got uh, Michael Crippen, let's see. He's a match that tends to have the same sort of origin there. So, and yeah. you can focus on. Ah, see the, yeah. yeah, there we go. Now we see them. 1800s, so they ended up coming over here to, interesting, Iowa. Iowa. Hmm. Wow, that's different. Mm -hmm. Okay, but each one. Can and I saw a really, there, see the clusters over to the left? See the 19, like all of those over there? Did you see all those? Yeah. Over sure, there sure. You see. Yeah. You see and how they're all right there? Where they were settling. And so yeah. that big old layer upon layer upon layer, you can see some the of the overlap that right here in happening. Eastern Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we were quite a. And it gives you the matches. Yeah. Yeah, it can show you 
what matches and stuff fall in that area where they were. And, uh, you know, you want to corroborate everything. Just like when you're doing the paper trail in regular genealogy, you want to corroborate the ethnicity as much as you can, you know, the migration and stuff. And it even gets some migration patterns. The Some of these are really... kind of boom way out there. now this funny thing is let me see if I can find it again I got so excited when it was the pressure one by the way we're also I'm looking at like I said we only got about oh we only got a few minutes left um we're looking at 23 and me's like they've got theirs is 50 percent off as well um we determined my heritage was also 50 who was it was uh one of them was only about 60 percent i mean like they were 40 percent off i guess yeah. was it ancestry i think it was ancestry family tree dna so basically the trick question for part of this discussion today was that they've all got to, they've all got sales going on right now and and they'll it, they'll do it again some of them will stop for a little bit and then they'll do it again come christmas time any of the holidays yeah but um uh, it gives you some of the matches that you can actually look at and i had the one in uh, Poland and I pulled it up and looked at shared matches on one of them the shared match was my brother <laughs> and then on the other one I had no shared matches with him <laughs> so <laughs> but that's because they have not tested a whole lot over in Europe yet not in that area not in Germany uh, and unless, Russia and unless stuff. they're in my heritage right yeah yeah and that's uh, why you know with those lines you probably want to go with my heritage once you cross over the water that's why having both is a good idea so as we number one we thank linda so much for today's discussion because it's been really great i love how visual everything was um if anybody wants to get in touch with linda again linda is a professional genealogist she does offer services um what is your website so people can track you down twinoaksgenealogy.com there we go, twinoaksgenealogy.com. Yeah. She's also in, uh, she's in AppGen as well, Association mm -hmm. Professional Genealogists. She's listed there. Um, so her contact information is all in there, but she gave you a website, so. Yeah, and if you that. just want to throw something out there and have a discussion, I can confuse you, uh, like, uh, you know, Malcolm can straighten you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about as straight as a corkscrew. <laughs> but, but seriously, it's it's a learning process, and like I said, everything. I mean, I just saw a change on there now that I hadn't picked up on yet. So I mean, it's constantly changing and evolving. But it's always good to talk things out too, because getting relationships straight is a challenge. Trying to get in your head. If, now, what is a second cousin three times removed, and who's that going to be, and where's that going to fall? So. Um, you can just email Twin Oaks and I can maybe talk you through it and confuse you enough to where it just all of a sudden clicks for you. And I'm still confused with that works wonders too. <laughs> as long as you all are straight on, you know, what to do, where to go. You know, like I said, there's target testing. If you're looking for a particular person. And one other thing too, is if you're wanting to, um, work on particular problems you do want to look at getting first cousins second cousins maybe even some third cousins tested just depending on where the problem is that would be kind of like targeted testing so you can compare the cousin levels to help you go back somebody that would be inheriting the dna as well but may not be as close as a sibling so if you're looking for the great grandparents you might want to test the second cousins for that as well in that line great well this has been awesome and thank you guys for coming uh, i think it's gonna make a really great great video for thank you for letting me ramble catch up. <laughs> <laughs> let people catch up uh later on and so we can share it with others and i will be in touch with you on um who we have to shade out for editing yeah. so that we don't share all these people's personal information um, yeah, they might get upset. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't want to do that. I think we might find cousins. 
oh well <laughs> oh sometimes family can be worse than friends so. that's true <laughs> and and that the most important thing of all and we, I should have mentioned this from the very beginning. I know we're going a little longer, but the most important thing of all, remember the ethical considerations. Mm-hmm. You, whoever you ask to test, be prepared. Have If they're going to test for you, make sure you make, let them get them to understand that there may be surprises there. There may be surprises that they weren't expecting. And because it's always a possibility. And at some point in time, when you stop and think of how many people we're related to, it's bound to happen somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, you know, we, you want to keep their privacy, but also be prepared for anything. Yeah. Anything. In fact, that one site you were sharing at the beginning, there's uh is that one that has like some ethics sheets or like guidelines you can print out and kind of give to your family member. And yeah. if you give them a t- if you gift them with a test. Uh, for the yeah. holiday season that you can make you sure can they're prepared for the results mm-hmm. that they they understand what they're getting when with their eyes open when they go in and that they understand that they need to be respectful of the results as well mm-hmm. if they discover that all of a sudden they're what they thought was their first cousin is really a half cousin or not a cousin at all and just because you don't share dna with them doesn't mean you're you know, there's those you may not have inherited anything in common, but, you know, there, there's a lot of family secrets that are coming to light via DNA, and we need to be respectful of, some people don't want them to come to light yet, they be aware of them, even though we want them to come to light so we can fill in that, you know, person, but. <laughs> may not be for another generation or two before people are ready to actually hear what was uncovered. You can get a lot of obstinate rejection out of some of this and so yeah and there are workarounds for those who don't respond Mm -hmm. well thank you all so much for coming and uh have a happy thanksgiving week that's coming up thanksgiving just a reminder the library is closed this week uh due to that fact and plus some filming actually we're there's a movie being filmed in our library this week (laughs) good time to do it Unless you wanted to be on the film. Uh, Yeah, not me. I'm literally (laughs) staying home. (laughs) But um, yeah, so a lot of things going on. But we will catch up to you guys after the holidays. And uh, hopefully this video will be coming up onto the YouTube channel probably in a couple of weeks. So thank you all so much. Uh, Next next month is Documenting Family Traditions. So I hope to see you guys back next month. Bye.